I'm Kirsten Meekin from Nail Nails and in this video I'm going to answer a question that everybody keeps asking. Everybody keeps asking, how do I care for my brush? So that's what we're going to do. Not hair brushes, like, you know, your hair. Nail brushes. I've got a selection of brushes here. We have this great big enormous one. I've never used it. I'm still going to show you how to care for it. I've got a couple of acrylic brushes here which are very similar sizes. They have been used and used and used and used. I definitely need some new brushes. I can never have too many brushes. I'll show you how to care for those. And this is an art brush that's been used quite a lot. It's got a little bit of glitter in it or something or other. There's glitter everywhere in here. Yeah, I don't know why it is. But I'll show you how to revive that and make that better than it is. I'll get you a gel brush as well. So I've got a gel brush here, I'll show you how to care for that as well. So, I'm going to start with my acrylic brushes. In this dampened dish here, I have got some brush cleaner. Now the brush cleaner will care for the brush so it won't strip it from too many oils, it won't dry it out and make it brittle. It's the same as like with you know, your natural hair. If you didn't condition it, it would go all horrible at the ends and then you need to cut it. But you can't do that with your brushes. You can't just cut the end of your brush off, can you? Because it will not work. What I'm going to do is, you can see it's not shaped or anything. This has been on the side for a while. So I'm going to submerge it into the liquid and give that a few seconds to just soak into the brush. And then I'm going to take, you can either use your lint free pads or you can use some paper towel. It's up to you. I like to use paper towel because it absorbs very quickly. Now as I drag this, I can see, I can see here, excuse me, I have no nails on, okay. We're going to do some nail videos so I have no nails on. Don't, don't, don't scream and shout at me. Like, oh my god, she's got no nails on, her nails are so ugly. <laughs> I always go into an American accent. I just, I I like just love doing either. American accents because I love America. <laughs> so you can see that there is here some product in the brush. So I'm going to show you how to clean that out. You can just use pure acetone but you don't want to just use that. So we have another dampened dish here. Got some acetone. I'm gonna submerge it into the acetone and I'm gonna leave that for around 15 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're very yeah, fast yeah. seconds. Yeah, are they? Are they too fast? <laughs> yeah, they're weird, weird. So you gotta do a one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three okay. Mississippi. Four Mississippi. Five Mississippi. It's about 15 Six. seconds now, so. Is it? Yeah. You're going to pull this way. Don't ever push your brush this way. It will ruin the bristles. You want to pull it to the tip. So you can see that it starts to soften the product. You can see a bit of a change in the product. It's gone paler. I'm going to do that again. Just one more time. So we're going to do it because we just wanted the product to start to break down. Same again. We're going to pull it towards the tip. Now we're going to go into the brush cleaner. What I like to do is get a little bit of blue tack. This is not chewing gum, this is blue tack. Keep the brush nice and saturated. You can turn the brush upside down and then rest it with some of the blue tack against something so you know that it's all being saturated but I like to do it the opposite way around because I want everything to come to the tip okay. acrylic bottle. Does it go faster if you use the high speed bottle? Of course yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what that's doing is letting the liquid draw to the tip and it'll start to separate the product from the brush. So we're reviving the brush from its death. So before it dies, we're gonna fix it. So after roughly around one minute, 
We didn't count one Mississippi two, Mississippi three, Mississippi. We roughly did a minute. We're gonna do the same again. And then we're gonna wiggle the brush. Still to the tips. We're gonna go back in and do the same. So just go into your liquid, into that brush cleaner. Keep wiggling it. So as you wiggle it across like that, it's gonna force the product out of the brush. There's just one little tiny bit in there now. Which I'm gonna give that. One more minute. You definitely can't rush this process. If you do, then you'll end up with a jacked up brush. We're gonna do the same again. So as you press the brush down, you'll able to see the bristles start to open. And you can see if there's any product left in there. And I think we're pretty much good to go now. I'm going to take some acrylic liquid. It doesn't really matter what acrylic liquid, as long as it's the one that you use. And I'm just going to saturate all those bristles. And then I'm going to come back to the paper towel using a separate section, nice clean area, and spinning the brush in my hand. Oh, let's take the blue tack off now. We don't need that. Spinning the brush in my hand, I'm going to reshape the brush. There you are. It is fixed and revived and it's ready to use. Now, if you leave a brush for more than, I would definitely say more than three days in a pot without being touched, when you come to use it, the liquid will have changed its colour and it would have gone a little bit yellow. So you could never just go straight into your liquid and start to work with it. You would always need to clean that brush to get rid of that discoloration. And if your brush is starting to go yellow, then, oh my God, you're not busy enough. Because if you're not touching that brush for three days, you need more customers. <laughs> so that's that brush done. So you can see these two were very similar at first, weren't they? They were both this, they were both a little bit, you know, messed up and needed to go to the brush hospital. So that's what it should look like. This is what it should not look like. So let's have a look at this one. Get a bit more brush cleaner. So as I clean through this one, the brush cleaner alone is actually cleaning any product from the bristles. Because that's shaping straight away. And if we go like this with the bristles, we can see there is no product in there. It's all clean. So sometimes it's as simple as that. I'm going to go into the liquid, the acrylic liquid, and now spin the brush in my hand. So I'm turning it to bring that to a nice point. You would do this with, even if you had, like this brush is completely round, it's not crimped here. So you see this one's crimped. So as I turn it, it's thinner here because it's crimped and this one's a complete barrel you would do this turning the brush in the hand to make it go to a nice point with that kind of brush as well it doesn't matter if it's crimped or not this humongous brush i've never used it but i looked at it and thought i, I like a challenge so I think we may use this one day, but it is a little bit messed up. So it does need to go into some brush cleaner. Wow, that soaked up all that brush cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> we need a little bit more of that in there for this big massive brush. Let's have a look what this is like. So well, why would you need a brush that big? Because I mean, nobody, People have nails big enough to need that size brush. Some people like to do one bead application, which I do. I do a lot of one bead application, but I don't need a brush quite this big. But I want to see if I can do it with this humongous brush. Or maybe it's for like, you know, they got blokes with really big. Like giants. Yeah. 
Right. Like the mountain from Game of Thrones. You don't watch that, do you? Like, He's a big dude. <coughs> like the BFG? If you were doing the BFG's nails? God, at least the person I said was real. <laughs> if you do the BFG's <laughs> nails, you know, as you might do, you would need a big brush like <laughs> I'm going to put this into the acrylic liquid now and then give it a final twist and turn, pulling it to a nice point. So that brings all the bristles back into shape. And then you can put the lid on. If this brush isn't shaped nicely to a point, you would never get the lid on. Gel brush. Now, it's always a good idea to have a gel brush with a lid on. That's always brilliant, but I know that's not always possible. Keeping the gel brush slightly tacky will always hold the bristles into shape. However, if you don't have a brush with a lid, you need to keep it clean. So you can still use the brush cleaner and clean that through. Still wiggling it and then pulling it into a nice flat point like that. So it's like a knife. That's all you need to do with your gel brush and you can leave that. And obviously there's no product in that now so you can leave it out, put it in a pot. But if you've got a lid for it that would be even better because you could literally just get a little bit of gel residue. I'll show you. Come on, let's show you what you can do. A little bit of gel, residue, wipe off solution. And then you would simply wipe it into a nice sharp point. And some of the residue of the gel would still remain in, in the brush because you've not got into brush cleaner or anything like that and you've only gently wiped it, you've not like give it a good scrub or anything and that will hold the brush bristles into shape nicely as well. Now, nail art brushes. This nail art brush has been through the mill. It's got acrylic on it and all sorts going on. So what I would do with this, I would definitely use a lint free pad. Get the brush cleaner, put a little drop on there and then wrap it around the bristles and spin the brush, pull it to you. You can see on there all of that. And it didn't even look that bad, did it? No. I'm going to do it again. And you'll repeat this until it's completely clean. If you do gel art with art brushes, you know, you've got to make sure that that's clean. So use some gel residue wipe off solution first and then go into your brush cleaning. And you want to make sure that is left with a nice point. Just like that. Before you use your nail art brush, if you're going to use it for gel, I would give it a wipe over with gel residue wipe off solution. And if you're going to use it for nail art, as in um, freehand art, acrylic paints or watercolours, rinse it in water first. So you go into the water and just pull that through exactly the same as we did just. There you are. All them brushes. Let's have a look at them. We've been to the brush hospital. They look so much better. So all those brushes are revived, ready to use, lovely jubbly. You didn't need to throw them in the bin. They're ready to use. As long as you care for your brushes and look after them, they will last you a long time. You need the brush to be in its best condition to get the best result. There's no point in using a really rubbish brush to try and get the Mona Lisa on your nails. It just won't work. Okay, so make sure you care for your brushes. I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And don't forget, everything we've used today is in the description box below. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And I'll see you all in the next video. See you later. Bye. Hopefully I'll have nails on then as well. Because that's just not nice. I'm Kirsten Meekin from Nail Nails and in this video 
I'm gonna show you. Hi, I'm Kirsty Meek. Oh, you can get me, got me hands and show something. Hi, I'm Kirsty Meekin from Nail Nails, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about brush care. That was shit. Hi, I'm Kirsty Meekin from Nail Nails, and in this video, I'm going to talk, just talk about. No. Hi, I'm Kirsty Meekin from Nail Nails, and in this video, oh. Hi, I'm Kirsty Meekin from Nail Nails, and in uh, Saying that, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm a sippy, too, Miss Tippy, too, Miss Tippy. Oh, it's it's still way too fast. <laughs> I just told you fast. Oh, you can't whistle in tune, can you? That the was... insults, the insults. That was so bad. 